Hello and welcome to this Planner Workbench uh, optimization set of reports. Uh, today we're going to cover um, the Planner Workbench, how to make it more usable for the planners, because basically it's without reports and uh, form export doesn't work very well either uh, for, for planner data. So without further ado, I'll get cracking. Um, just uh, quickly run through a couple of slides. Uh, a little funny one here about uh, the planners uh, really wanting to use the planner workbench. More often than not, they're using spreadsheets, uh, which is not really the intention. A uh, bit about Blitz Report, because that's what's uh, powering this this show here. Um, this is the pyramid we always draw. So you have your IT at the top who develop the reports. Business analysts can also develop reports if they've got some uh, SQL knowledge. And then you've got the business user who's going to be running the reports, uh, effectively the planners. Uh, what do we do? Blitz, Blitz is basically, uh, it sits in the EBS form, uh, hence there's very li little training, basically one hour and you're up to speed. Uh, follows all the rules about uh, e you know, EBS assignments like security, uh, signing to a responsibility or a user. Uh, creates formatted Excel, doesn't use CSV, doesn't go through XML. Uh, it, it adhered to the v, VPD policies, so basically you can restrict sensitive data from your development team. Uh, you can you can take your BI publisher and your discovery reports, and you can uh, convert them to BI publisher. Uh, sorry, to, to Blitz report within seconds. Uh, basically, just import them, brings in the parameters, uh, the SQL, and the assignments. Um, we also do uh, support for the data analytics uh, that have recently come out, the enterprise command centers, uh, and we solve some of the problems around there. But uh, today we're talking about the planner workbench, so uh, taking enough of your time, just giving you an overview about uh, Nginatics and, and Blitz Report, which is going to power this demonstration. Uh, I'm in the planner workbench. Uh, we've got a set of reports which we add. Uh, into the uh, into the action menu. That's literally uh, a one minute setup that you can do with forms personalization to launch a function. Uh, there are plenty of blogs and articles uh, uh, how to do that on our homepage if you have a look. Okay, so let's launch the planner reports. Um, we tend to um, call our planner reports, start the MSC, which is obvious for the schema. Uh, one in particular I'm interested in is the horizontal plan. Um, if we look at the horizontal plan, standard horizontal plan, it's just not very usable. Uh, let's just do a right click and I'll show you what I mean. Um, <clears throat> this will then open this report, which is the standard Oracle report that all the planners have to use. We see down here projected, projected available balance, uh, projected on hand. And then across here, we've got all our supply and demand types. We've got our buckets, which are coming from our preferences, uh, planner preferences. So, you know, up here, we've got your preferences, which drives that. You can obviously collapse and reduce these. You can remove columns from here by uh, right click, uh, show and hide. Uh, so. Basically, if we go to our report, uh, which is the same as this, we use the same uh, uh, APIs so that you know that there should be no differences. Um, we also allow multiple items within our horizontal plan, multiple organizations, which uh, you know, pretty sensible thing to do. Uh, I'm going to pick the ATP plan here. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, organization M1 because I know I've got some data there. I'm just going to select another org because we can do that. And very quickly, just pop another org. That's uh, much faster than the Planner Workbench, by the way. <laughs> you can put a category in here. You can put your item in particular that you're interested in. Uh, I'm going to keep things the same. So I'm going to use the same item that we use, which is the CM13139. Uh, uh, so let's just pop that in. Uh, CM1319. And I'm going to put in another item as well, which is going to be the AS. Uh, let's pick a good one here that we know has got some planned data. Um, I suspect that that one is pretty good. OK, so we're going on days on buckets. So we could e equally flip that to weeks um, or periods. I'm just going to pop it into weeks um, and go ahead and run. So now we've got two items in our horizontal plan. We've got two organizations in our horizontal plan. And we can now have a look at the data. Um, this is uh, goes through the concurrent uh, requests. So th this is also uh, schedulable if you want to do that. We totally integrate with uh, EBS. 
there are no gotchas there you see here we've got the planning instance the plan name we've got the organization as you would expect we've got the item and then going across we've got our good old supply and demand and our horizontal plan is effectively here so very quick uh, reports much faster than the standard oracle one uh, more flexible because we've got additional columns we can add more columns here we've got we could have the category we've got the category set uh, so from a user perspective uh, it's very straightforward for them to tailor um, it's a little uh, like folder technology where you can say okay I don't want to see that I don't want to see the plan name um, and you can add additional columns in here um, using your developer function this is what the user gets to do they get to reorder uh, the columns, you know, that, that are, are visible. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, so if I now run that again, um, we won't have the uh, those two columns for the instance and the plan. Uh, and that's as quick as that. That, that uh, template can be saved, by the way. Um, so now we've, we've just got organization item category. So if you wanted to go and add additional things, you just go into to the setup. Um, and then over here, we've got the ability to add additional logic in here. <clears throat> so if you wanted to add additional fields, you well, you could quite easily do so um, within a, a couple of seconds. We've got version control here as well. So as we develop reports or as your team develop reports, they go through various uh, test phases. Uh, and these are then exportable to your next environment. So, you know, it's very, very easy for an IT team to develop a report and then basically make it available to the next environment by simply exporting it using uh, export and then import into the next environment. Uh, we also, uh, like, like I mentioned before, we import uh, your good old uh, BI publishers and we import uh, concurrent programs, discoverers. And more recently, we import uh, Excel for apps, which is something that's, uh, uh, you know, also out there. Um, not as fast as Blitz Report, obviously. That's why people are, are changing to it. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and run some more reports. We've got the same uh, version of the plan. Um, if I go into the planner menu, we've got um, the vertical version of this. So some planners would prefer to have the vertical data. Perhaps they want to pivot the data. Um, or, or do something more interesting with it that I haven't. Um, if I put in the right uh, code, that would help. Um, so let's put in our famous item, CM13, and find that one in the list of values. Again, I'm going to flip it to weeks. And uh, the preference set is the default. That's the one we're using at the moment. Uh, and I'll go ahead and run that. If I press run, you see it goes pending, out running, and then the output. We open everything uh, fully all automatic, so we can apply filters, we get the data size right. It's not like CSV where you've got to spend 10 minutes uh, reformatting. This is all done for you up front. Okay, to the right, uh, we've got uh, our supply and demand, as you would expect. We've got the period number going down the page now instead of across the page. And we've got our supply and demand quantities over on the right so very straightforward to use much better than the oracle reports uh, we go further than that uh, we will let me just close these down i've got a report uh, <laughs> i'm drowning in reports uh, so if you want to come up here you don't have to use the menu you just simply come in here and type msc we've we've enabled double click so that you don't even have to click in the dots uh, which helps uh, people. Uh, the pegging, obviously, that's uh, a nice one because the pegging is in a subform, as all the planners know, and uh, they find it completely frustrating that that's uh, in that situation. So if I go back into supply and demand, we see the pegging is here, uh, which is not really very helpful when you want to export this. Um, you'd export the, the supply and demand, but you wouldn't export uh, the, the pegging. So what we do is we go and run our reports. In fact, I'm going, I already had the report open. So let's uh, run the pegging reports. Again, I'm going to pick, uh, pick one item, uh, one org. I'll just do that uh, in here. We can go by category. Uh, we can run by pretty much any criteria you need. We can add criteria if you need it, or you can add it. Um, so I've selected an item. I'm going to uh, compare that item for its uh, pegging. 
I'll compare it to the real workbench. Uh, I said we, we use APIs anyway, so there's, uh, we can't deviate from what Oracle is doing. Uh, you see here, we've got the plan instance on the left. Um, over to the right, we've got our item, we've got our category, we've got our category name, we've got our make buy flag. We've got uh, a lot of good stuff that's uh, required. We've also got our actions, schedule in, schedule out, none. Uh, we've got the supply quantity, we've got the peg quantity, and we pegged a sales order. Here we pegged a safety stock, more sales orders, works orders, and safety stock. So, and here are all the, the demand sales order numbers as well. You've got your pegging date, you've got your old dates, you've got everything you need as a planner, and it's in a proper report. What more could you want? Um, you can obviously report on as many items or organizations as you need to in a single report, which is, again, something that you can't do with the Oracle report. So let's go and have a look at some of the other reports uh, for the MSC uh, team. Uh, so, so far, we've really helped your planners uh, become more efficient. Um, we've got things like uh, sourcing rules from the plan side. We've got attribute control. Uh, now, attribute control is all about uh, planning attributes. Uh, very often, plan, planners say, well, what happened to this planned order? Because, uh, you know, my values have changed. I was not expecting that. And that could be as a result of somebody uh, doing some changes on lead time or changing uh, safety stock to maybe uh, MRP safety stock or something. So here we do it. We go uh, MSC, uh, <clears throat> MTL, sorry, system items would be uh, how we would do it. Um, then we'd say, okay, well, what date do you want to audit from? Well, we're we going to say, okay, I don't know the date of this database, so I'm just going to take it quite loud, quite uh, a low range. Um, through audit, which users are you interested in? Well, we're interested in all. What columns are you going to audit? Well, ATP flag has been flipping about. Um, I want to keep a track on that. Uh, I'm going to select some more here. Uh, I'm very interested in the cumulative lead time because that seems to be driving what's uh, what's going wrong. Uh, the fixed lead time and the full lead time. And I'm also interested in the MRP safety stock percent and the MRP safety stock method. Because now I've got these, okay, you could, you could drill, argue, argue you could drill them uh, down into the items form from the planner workbench. But what you can't see is you can't see who did it uh, when uh, in a very quick way. So here I'm going to say, okay, I need segment one. That's the item code. Uh, I wouldn't mind the description, actually. Uh, let's just do a multi-select here. And let's put in the description. I obviously selected two quickly. Um, let's see if I can find that one. Um, description. There we go. Uh, I can join two additional tables. So here we'd probably sensibly want to go to the MTL parameters so we can get the organization code. Uh, so MTL parameters. You see how flexible the auditing is? Uh, it's, again, straightforward to do. And on, on this particular case, you know, I'm going to do the organization code. Now, once you've got your parameters there, you can go ahead and uh, you can save those. So you don't have to keep putting them in. You know, that's be quite optimal for the planner. Now I'm going to run this report. I've got immediate audits uh, on those objects that, that I was interested in. And you see here, I've got uh, the audit timestamp, the table, when it was done, um, the, the organization, what the segment was, what the description was, what the organization uh, ID was, what the column was. Okay, that's had a full lead time change from naught to five. Uh, and then it's had a, a second change from 35 to 40. Uh, our MRP safety stock percentage has been increased to 100. And we flipped the code from 1 to 2, so it looks like it's been enabled. Um, you could go one step further and, and uh, clarify. Uh, take, it, take a snapshot of this report and just take it a little bit further by giving yourself uh, yes, no. But uh, I happen to know that that's uh, set on. Uh, safety... safety uh, the ATP flag's been flipped from no to yes, and then back again. So we've got some great information here about what could be had, what, what could be happening, and why our plan is changed. Uh, invaluable to a planner um, because they're always looking for reasons why you know the investigation uh, into their planned order was potentially wrong. And this is the quick, quickest way to do it because you can just see who's been changing what when. Right next.
plan a report. So we've done uh, pegging, we've done horizontal plan, we've done vertical plan, we've done uh, the protection or the the checking of the um, the cases where things have been changed. Again, I'm going to pick our, our favourite plan, uh, which is ATP plan. I'm going to, to pick our favourite org and I'm going to leave everything else like that so that's our exceptions that's going to run our exceptions uh, you could run it by planner you could run it by buyer you could run it by whoever you want to run it by uh, the important thing is you get your data out very quick as you can see we get a filtered uh, sheet again all properly sized very easy to read we've got our, our org code here we've got our exception group so you can filter those um, so here we've got a very easy exception group um, you could then start targeting which planner should have these um so you know this is making uh, a lot easier of managing your exceptions than running them through the standard query workbench uh, which is uh, painful slow and inefficient uh, so these could be mailed obviously using um you know the mailing tools uh, that that's uh, provided either through the concurrent manager or you connect you can use our ex extended functionality through here uh, where we have the ability not only to pick the columns. So if I was to close that, um, let's just say I didn't want the planning instance. I'll just call that uh, Glenn's plan report for exceptions. And then you can share this. So once you make a template with all the columns in the right order, uh, you haven't had to talk to IT. Uh, this just, you know, it's win-win. So basically here you've got your email out options. So you go a at b dot com uh, comma c at d dot com. So you can just mail as many people you want. You can send the output uh, as a copper comma separated file you could take it as tab or you can send it as a microsoft which is the default you can put row limits on here so if you want to do some testing and you know there's uh, 20 million records not that blitz would have a problem with that um, you could put some limits here you can also do some stuff whereby you send uh, files out uh, to for example um, tableau or microsoft bi um, we, we support that so you can just pick your file pattern you can send it out to unix uh, you can also convert it to a pdf if that's what you want to do using that technique okay let's close this um, that's the msc exceptions let's have a look at some more reports for us msc um, we've got uh, supply and demand this is a good one um, a lot of planners uh, like to have their planned orders emailed to them uh, well that that implies they're not actually using the planner workbench but uh, sometimes they just prefer to come in the morning with uh, all those planned orders that they want to work on uh, sent to them based on the the start date so let's just have a look and see if we've got any planned orders probably uh, do have some um, let's just go ahead. So you see here we've got the order type. I'm going to pop in planned order. Again, you can multi-select on any of these uh, columns. Um, that was not the one I wanted. Um, planned order there. And you can add the sourcing organization if you want. Suggested start date has uh, been uh, set to here. I'm going to say suggested start date is in the past because I don't think the plan's been run for some time. Um, I think I'm going to go back as far as uh, June because um, I haven't run the plan recently, I don't think. Okay, let's uh, run that and see what it looks like. Um, again, through the concurrent manager, you can pick these all up. All of these reports, by the way, you don't need to register them as concurrent programs because there is only one concurrent program. That's called Blitz Report. Um, and the advantage of that is you don't have to go through all of these IT uh, uh, change request meetings uh, you basically you're fast tracking your report so a report from start to finish can be created in in a few minutes the, like I said before there's no XML um, it's just very quick uh, development and as you can see perfect output so quantity supplier action required make uh, make buy flag uh, again this is fully configurable you can change for however the, the categories are displayed or the, the columns uh, affecting these you see here we've got our processing our lead time we've got our planned order time fence uh, we've got our need buy and then across to the right so here 
we've got our, all our different uh, aspects that you would expect um, from this. But you know, you would probably want to tailor the report to just so the show the pertinent uh, columns that you want to have. You've got using assembly in there as well. Um, so what we will do now is we'll run the next report. Let's see MSC uh, supply dump for planned orders. Um, the other thing to notice here, uh, say, is to go back to that report, um, and we just uh, click in the template, um, press on setup, and let's just see what we're selecting here. Um, you see here, so the SQL is just dropped into here. The parameters are made with basically you can reuse the parameters so you, you don't have to specify these but you can put dynamic sql in there if you want to do some clever things where one parameter value is is based on another parameter value and then you could build up some dynamic sql as well that will join back to the to the main code um, i'm just going to go back and run um, here because i just want to have a look at the template that, that i created and let's just see what it looks like uh, you see here we've taken a few things out, like um, the planner. Let's put that back in. Um, the order type would be quite handy. The item description I would like. Um, the banner name, but the buyer name. So you can move these up and down. So if you don't like the order of play, you can multi-select. You can say, okay, there's some things here that I don't want in that order. You just bring them up. Okay, so now we run it. And now you get, uh, well, if I put all the parameters in, you would get a report that uh, is usable and basically runs very quickly. Um, so to have a look at the concurrent requests, they go like this. Um, we always open them automatically. That's an option. We use Firefox here because it's a lot, a lot more efficient than Internet Explorer. So you see here, we've got um, our report names. The prefix is on Blitz report here. Yes, so um, that's the only concurrent program. So we hold um, that in a, in a table, in a Nginetics table, and then basically every SQL that's being created is then simply um, append, appended to it, um, or at least Blitz report is appended to it. So very simple. Um, this one now, if we go to the output, I didn't see it open. Um, I don't even know if I ran it. Let's have a look. And let's have a look at the output. So everything you expect now, you've got the, the additional columns in there that you wanted. That's how easy it is to configure. <clears throat> so from a report perspective let's just see what other reports we've got for the planner making their lives a lot easier as you can see um, this is somewhere around 30 times faster than bi publisher by the way for size of data so you know if you've got reports running out to bi publisher and they take an age let's say 20 minutes or sometimes don't even run uh, do talk to us because we'll have that report running in a couple of minutes for you right next We've got, uh, we've covered that one, and the only other one we haven't looked at are the, the source, sourcing rules. Uh, pick an assignment set. I'm going to pick the ATP assignment set. That will then run um, and deliver us all of our plan side uh, rules that we've got. So very good at analysing, especially those who use using GOP, where you've got all your regional rules in there. Um, so again, very simple to follow. You've got, got over here, you've got your regions. If you had any regions, I'm not sure if we have any regional codes here. Clearly we haven't. Um, your categories, uh, your orgs, etc., are all in there, you know, whether you've got um, bill of distributions or whatever. This, this one's obviously very simple. It doesn't seem to have anything other than uh, straightforward assignments, but uh, you get my point. Uh, by all means, log on to our system. Uh, come and talk to me directly. My name is Glenn Whelan. Uh, I've been around planning for quite some time. Uh, I've started to, with Oracle in the early 90s. Um, I've trained on Planner Workbench as well. So if you need a hand, um, ideas, we've got, we're have got. we going to replace this Planner Workbench anyway because it's, uh, it's not much use uh, to anybody. So we've already developed another 
uh, workbench for the MRP team. And I'll just show you quickly what that looks like for those of you who haven't seen it. Uh, for those of you who have, then uh, obviously stop watching now. <laughs> um, so here's the supply chain hub. Uh, this is powered by a Blitz report as well, you see here. That's a Blitz report in itself, fully configurable, so it takes literally minutes to uh, to change this. But you can pinpoint your data. So this is ideal for planners or buyers or customer services because uh, they can just pop their, their buyer code in here, whether it's a make or buy, and just build up criteria. You know, you see here if you've got item description, long description, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if they always uh, work within the same product range, then why not use recent? Um, and if we use recent here, we've got our explosion levels on the bill of materials, so I can quickly expand that um, and then go down here. Uh, we can pick an item. So I was using the CM139. Uh, uh, pop across to supply and demand. Actually, before I do that, I'll just show you what right click you can do. You can go off to any of these item on hand, bill of materials, routing where used material transactions, and they load up all of the standard Oracle forms look that you would expect. And we pre-populate with the, the details to save the planners time. Uh, so they don't have to keep putting in their, um, their detail. They just simply get uh, all of their transactions here and get away from this little buglet that Oracle have put in here. Um, Right, there you go. So you can see the standard uh, material transactions. If that's not good enough for you, you can just come back in here and you can run uh, any of our reports. And again, we take all the uh, values that are on the screen and we run our item reporting for those. Um, as you can see, very quick, goes straight through the concurrent manager, pre-filtered. Uh, here you've got all the detail about uh, your item, cost of goods sold, etc., etc., planning methods, uh, lead times, name it, customer orderable, chippable, transactable, um, invoice enabled, etc. So if you had several items on the screen, it would have just picked up all of them. Um, if you want to drill into your items in particular, you just pop across to the details over here, and now you can just down and arrow through all your items that are on screen. So very quick. Uh, all the forms have the same reports. You can add to those. Uh, from the supply and demand viewpoint, we allow the ability to drill into any of the transactions. So you can open your move orders, you can open your sales orders, you can open your purchase orders. Um, that's all, you know, one click. So <laughs> very quick. Uh, a planner can also change his organization, um, which allows them to uh, basically see uh, a different org view here. So if we look at the item now, um, we should see this item in M2 and we haven't had to change org. So just a few highlights here uh, of what we're doing. Um, if you just want to write a report yourself, um, you've got the Blitz reports uh, tool. You can just create a report, an ad hoc report. Perhaps let's call this one setup uh, of items. And then we just quickly bang in our, our SQL. So it selects uh, MSIB dot, dot star comma mp dot star from mtl system i don't think that's my best typing glenn items <laughs> <laughs> underscore b comma mtl parameters uh, mp where one equals one and mp dot organization ID equals MSIB dot. So that's that's our report ready to roll. If I just take away this typo, um, we're done, I would say. Very easy to test. Um, as I said, uh, we've got the VPD, so you can't go anywhere. Um, your organization doesn't want you to go. Um, so if we run this now, if I haven't done any further typos, this will run. Uh, we might want to add some parameters to, to this um, as well. So clearly I've, I've spelt something wrong here. So MP dot star would be good syntax, I would have said. Okay, now if I run this, generate our output, do a full dump on MTL system items. Um, and again, I've obviously done a, a typo, which we can have a look in valid identity. Oh, okay, MSIB, MSIB, uh, MTL. Uh, 
I must have typed something strange here. Oh, I see. I'd forgotten the alias on this side, MSI. Easily done when you're trying to do things quickly. Right, I should take my time. And it's still not working. So I've done something further amiss here. Um, oh, another typo. I should really use cut and paste. <laughs> Sorry, my eyes are not that uh, not that working today. I think I should have brought my glasses. Oh dear, it's one of those days. So let's just um, see where else I've gone. Uh, MSIB dot star MP MTL system items B MSIB MTL parameters MB and MP dot organization ID equals MSI and again just careless okay done this time it should work we've gone through this loop three times very poor development skills from me i'm sorry about that as a business user you wouldn't get the ability to do this but it depends if you've got sql skills and, and people trust you then why not but typically it would be a functional or a developer doing this uh, doing the things in the right way you don't have to um uh, wait for this so you can go back in you say well to be honest I want some parameters um, I'm interested in organization because that's a really good thing to to be searching on um, and I'm interested in organization code I'm going to pick this one up because it's reusable uh, MP organization code equals organization code that one should work and I'm interested in um, the last number of days that it was updated and I see one there that I can reuse. So there's my parameter. I'll assign it to a user. I'm going to assign it to myself. Doesn't make much sense, but I will. Um, so that's report now is delivered. OK, so that would be available for within the request set um, for the user. Um, and you see here we've had five versions. That's quite uncommon. So that would be uh, initial <laughs> initial test. And then here we go, typo one, <laughs> you know, etc. Um, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to run this. And now you see here we've got our default org. I'm going to pop in our default org of M1. And I'm looking for items that have changed within the last 100 days. And here of all the items that have changed in the last 100 days. So across from left to right, we've got all the columns we want. Um, we've got all the segments we need. We've got far too much information. So now we just quickly uh, edit this template because um, this is just a very quick report. Uh, I can basically hide all. And then I can just start picking the columns that I'm interested in. So I'm interested in segment one, of course. I'm interested in the description. And I'm interested in uh, a few other choice columns down here. You'd probably want to link to the code combinations table, CCIDs, etc. Um, I'm going to take some of these columns over. And I'm also interested in weights. And locator controls has been a problem lately. So there's our report. I'll close that. We're going to run that. We get a much condensed report now. Um, so. As that's running through the current manager, you see here, we've got a, a, an easier to read report. Segment one, widget, and we've got our columns that we selected from left to right. Very good. Um, that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, by all means, uh, personal message me, uh, leave a comment, uh, or use our demonstration system. Uh, so let's just show you where that is. So if we go to Enginatics, because some of you might want to have a look. Um, in here, we've got our toolkits. We've got our library. So even if you don't take Blitz report, you can come into the library. You can have a look at all the different types of uh, queries here. Uh, application DBA patches. Uh, we've got a suite of tuning patches and so on and so forth. All the blogs here. So this particular blog is um, is available here. And this is about getting all the horizontal with your ACP planning. And then in here, we talk about how to set things up, how to download. Blitz report takes 30 minutes to install. So, you know, it's, it's not going to take uh, much effort. And because it sits in EBS, uh, you, you won't have any extra training. We do created things like... Um, Auditing, you saw an example of that on the item controls where we were looking at um, how to prevent uh, 
problems in your planning. Uh, if you follow this uh, audit functionality uh, and enable audits on a few of your item attributes that, that you're having problems with, um, that, then you know your problems will be no more. Um, so to come back uh, to where we were, um, good idea is to look at our toolkits. So if we go to the toolkits page, um, you see here the type of toolkits we do. We do database tuning, we do support and upgrades and data migration. So basically we automate the VR100 process. Um, we've got a stack of operational reports covering all the core process from record to report, order to cache and supply chain and P2P. And then data management. We work on uh, the command centers to help them work better. Uh, we also allow more data to be extracted from those. Um, Good, I'm about to, to finish here. So um, by all means, get in touch uh, with further questions. Uh, we are on a roadmap to change, to replace the planner workbench for the ASDP module very soon. Uh, so do come to me with any requirements you may have.